bienvenidos a Lightspeed Spanish. This week we have something very special. We are talking to a gentleman called Mike Gardner. And Mike is going to give us some very important tips on learning Spanish. More to do with what not to do and perhaps with what to do. Okay, so Mike, hello, thank you for joining us. Me alegro de estar aquí contigo por primero, Gordon. Mi uh -huh. español es una porquería, pero soy experto en cometer muchos errores en el idioma. Uh -huh. So my Spanish pues is okay, alegro. but I've learned every single mistake I know, don't do it. So hopefully this okay. will help everybody. Okay, well that's that's the purpose of this, that you, I, I'm, what, just so you understand, Mike contacted me and said, look Gordon, I've got some some key things that I want to share with people about perhaps the, you know, the mistakes that, that I've made along the way and, and, you know, so that other people don't have to make them. Yeah. So we thought we'd make a video on it. So do you want to start running through your, your ideas, Mike? Okay. One by one, Gordon, I'll list them yeah. one after the other, one by one. Okay, yeah. sure. Well, my first one is about Michelle Thomas. Uh, now, right. most people, a lot of people started with him. He was like a bit of a pioneer, I think. I think his first mm -hmm. CDs came out probably 15, 16 years ago. Uh, and I think Absolutely, he's really, yeah. really good. He's very talented. He's very, been a very clever man. But he's, mm -hmm. there's a lot of things he says that are very, very misleading, especially when you get beyond the, the beginner stage. This is just my opinion. But I'm not knocking uh -huh. him. He's brilliant at, uh, at the way the verbs work and a lot of the grammar. But mm -hmm. he only goes so mm -hmm. far, and then I think you get very mixed up. I'll just give you a quick example. The difference between say and star, for example, and he, he just does this broad thing, which you guys have done a brilliant uh, book on, uh -huh. which which I've used, and it's wonderful. I'd recommend that to everybody. Uh, and the, uh, he just does the same thing everyone else does, which is say a permanent, a star, temporary. And, of course, yeah. if you say la catedral es en la esquina, how long has the cathedral been there for? 500 years. Sounds pretty permanent to me, but it's a star, yeah. correct? Because its exactly. location trumps exactly. everything. So that there, exactly. and so I think this, on that one, I'll wrap like this one up. Just be careful with him, and and I also think it's very misleading on the past tense. Um, uh -huh. he, he 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 talks about the preterite again being a dot in the past, so misleading, and it really s stopped my improvement for years and years and years. So I don't uh -huh. know what the Spanish for this is, but. Uh, the solar system has been in the universe for 400 billion years, but that's actually not, it's not, it's, uh, it's, it's, let me think, it's, uh, it's not, is it a star? I'll say, whatever it is, it's not what you think it is, because that sounds well, like, it's not a dot in the past, is it? I think, yeah, uh, it's when, it, obviously you brought it up to the present, it still exists, so we wouldn't yeah. use the preterite, but yeah. if you were talking about something that existed right. for 400,000 years yeah. before, yeah. it would have to be preterite because right. you've measured it. Uh, exactly. And that's certainly not a dot, I think that's what you're saying, it's not a dot, That's is it? exactly I mean, right. That's a, yeah. and a, a and big I, chunk. And I think it would, that's what I think is so unique about you two guys, because I've been learning Spanish 12 years, no one's ever said this about measuring it. I could never, and as soon as I understood that, it all seemed mm -hmm. to make sense. And there's the final thing yeah. about Michelle is black and white mistake. It teaches you, when you start a sentence with C, it's always a subjunctive. Nonsense. I think most Ooh. of the time it's yeah, not yeah. a subjunctive, is it? Most times most not. Most times not. So it, I just think be careful yeah. with him. That's all I would say. Yeah. But I do recommend him. It's very good for beginners. Okay. Yeah, it's, I think he's great for building confidence. Yeah, I think he's he good. does help people to make sentences. You get a sentence Absolutely. made, and that's great. Absolutely. But obviously, it's got its limit limitations. Yeah. So. Okay. So the, the second one is, don't bother learning about usted, because again, <laughs> and this came from him. I'm, I'm not sure. I think he died seven or eight years ago. He's very old. I think he was mm. in his nineties. He'd be over a yeah, hundred yeah. now. Now this yeah. is this is a guy that was. I think I'm right. Was born in Poland. whose first language was Hebrew. Right, then he went to live right. in France. The guy's a, a, a genius, um, but he, he spends a lot of time explaining how you go and talk to someone using Usted. I've lived in Spain three years. I get spoken to with Usted more because I'm very old, <laughs> right? But normally, yeah. unless you're speaking to the mayor or a policeman, just forget about it. It's such an informal country, and I think the world's changed 
since he learnt Spanish yeah. in the 1940s. So I would just say, until you get advanced, just forget Ustad, just call everyone, ¿Cómo estás? Which is another thing, in Murcia, of course, they cut the S's off. So they, yeah, they do, yeah. they speak informally, but they cut the S off. So they, they're saying, ¿Cómo estás? But they actually say, ¿Cómo está? That's the frustration of Murcia. And it's probably the same in a lot of places. So my other advice, sure. just forget Ustad until you get quite advanced. Okay, and I'll just add a little, a little caveat to that. Uh, Mike's talking about Spain, and that is very much the case, that, that 99% of the time people are going to use tú or vosotros. Mm -hmm. Obviously, if you're in other Latin American countries where, where usted is more popular, then, then absolutely that's what you use but as a default. But here in Spain, tú. Okay, so number three, Gordon, is that memorizing yeah. phrases, which, and I think we're going to go right. into this a bit later on, you're going to show some... Someone, so I'll just give you one example. I think this is a shortcut to enjoying visiting Spain, enjoying learning the language, because grammar uh -huh. is difficult. And if you start, if you're learning through grammatical phrases and how verbs work, it takes a long time. Whereas if you can just learn 20, 30 phrases, and I think we've got about 20 here, haven't we, to show people, it means you can go out in Spain and buy a coffee, you can ask someone how they are, and you don't have to even know what each word means. So, so one example, when we first came to Spain, uh, many years ago, uh, the hole in the wall wasn't English. Now most of them default to English once you've used it once, but then they didn't. Yeah. So we were always in the bank, what the heck's going on here? It's all in Spanish, we want to draw money out, there's always a queue behind us. So I got a Spanish friend to teach me to say, gracias por esperarme which is, I, okay. I think, thank you for waiting for me. And they really like it. Yeah. Spanish people love an attempt to speak Spanish, even if it's not very good. So again, we, we'll probably go into that later on, Gordon, because there's, a, there's quite a few, mm -hmm. some quite funny, some, yeah. some formal, some just, it'll, it'll just enhance your life here. Just a quick one that I don't think we've got after. If you're in a restaurant is it, uh, and you're having a nice meal, it's just dead simple. La comida aquí está riquísima. You just need, you don't need to be fluent. And the waiters love it, mm -hmm. you know, it's just a way of enhancing sure. your life here. So that's the third one. Sure. Okay, yeah. So, so there's, there's, the next one is about when you step off the plane or off the ferry and you're in a Spanish speaking country, and I'm particularly talking about Spain here. I know you've got mm -hmm. students all over the world. I can only speak about Spain. Spain is uh -huh. such a different country. They were invaded for 800 years. They had a f fascist dictator in living memory, they had a civil war, there's so much about the country that's different. So you've got to remember that, when, and don't look at the, your life here, or your time here, through the eyes of an English person. I'll give you an example. You go to a bank, the guy who's going to serve you is going to look like he's been digging their garden up, he's not going to have a suit on, there's going to be people behind you can hear everything you're saying, and once I was in the bank having quite an important meeting with all these Spanish people behind me, and a guy comes in, I recognise from the post office, he just gets up, hola, como estas? And they just go off in the back for 10 minutes. And now the Spanish, the English part of me was thinking, oh, how rude is that? But you mustn't think that. It's Spain. And it, for every one thing that frustrates you, there should be 20 things that are wonderful. It's a wonderful country with wonderful people. Mm -hmm. But just remember, you were in England. Things are done differently here. That's kind of my just advice on that one. Very true. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so the fifth one is how, again, be briefly referring to Michelle Thomas and lots of these things that are out there, which you guys don't do, you're quite exceptional here. They teach you very, very formal Spanish and very formal mm -hmm. ways of communi communi communicating with people. And, and so I've written one down here. Michelle Thomas teaches you to say, I've got it written down here, where is it? It's... Um, Puedo invitarte tomar una cerveza. Now, Gordon, have you ever been asked that by a Spanish person in your life, even one time? No. And, no. and so I think, no, no. again, it's what you guys do. This formal Spanish, it just doesn't even exist anymore. It's such a friendly, relaxed country. So just forget being formal and just be friends sure. with everybody. And it's a respectful thing only if you introduce to someone who is in his 80s or perhaps some grandparents or something, I guess it might, it might happen there. But uh, yeah. it, it's, just, it's just the way they speak, it's, it's just not formal. 
And I mean, some things, th these things really amuse me. I I've got a really lovely Spanish friend called Tony. I meet her every week. She's so lovely, such a typical Spanish woman. Her English is really good. And she'll drop her glasses on the floor and she'll just say, oh, joder. So we know what that means. And to so an English mm -hmm. person, it might seem, oh, well, that's an unusual thing. I didn't expect a woman to say that. It's just so different here and it's just so relaxed. Would you agree, Gordon? That's just what Spanish people are like. Uh, uh, absolutely. Uh... I mean, just to go back to your point about formal Spanish, I, I really don't think that formal Spanish has existed here in Spain for a lot of years, for, for, for decades. I'm sure you're um, right. The, the, the Spanish that, that um, we sometimes learn, which is this very, we're using poder, you know, puedo yeah, yeah. Uh, hacerte una pregunta, puedo. It's, it really isn't used very much. We like it because it's, it reflects our English. Yeah, in exactly. English, we say, can I ask you a question? But um, in in Spanish, there's, there's not really any need. They're much more direct, and exactly. so when you were when you were indirect, it sounds a little bit foreign. And it's right when all. you say thank you all the time. I watched a video of, with you yeah. and Cynthia talking about you being fined, and you said thank you <laughs> to the flea. See, I would say that, and they're Guilty. much more direct. Yeah. yeah, that that's exactly what I would do. Um, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, so yeah. It's, number six. I've got mm -hmm. why you should write a three-minute article. Uh, and so this, this is something I did with the help of a Spanish person. I, I, mm -hmm. I, uh, I wrote a, a short story which could be used in any social situation. And the idea okay. was, in my mind, was I'm in a bar. The, the, either there's, there's no one there but the uh, waiter or perhaps there's one person there. And he says to you, hello, are you English, right? And then he clearly wants to talk English with you and you want to talk Spanish with him. Now, if you've only learned formal Spanish and you know how to say, where's the cathedral, how old are you, you run out of things to say pretty quickly. But if you, if you can say sure. to them, que, que, que te gusta hacer en tu tiempo libre, for example, or you can say to them, which 99% of people in Spain like football and they either... Real Madrid or Barcelona. We talked about this simply. So Real Madrid is Los Blancos. And if you're a fan of Barcelona, it's Soy Cole. Just a little bit of slang there people might like. So uh -huh. I basically wrote a story where I was I had an interchange with a Spanish person. And the Spanish person helped me. And it was just, it was just 15, 20 sentences in which they reacted uh -huh. a certain way. And you can memorize them. And you, it, the good thing is it takes the pressure off. Because you can just slip into this conversation and you know you've memorised the word, you know the pronunciation is right, and, and you kind yeah. of... It, it's, I just think that's quite a good thing to do, and you'll and you learn because of it, of course. And, and the Spanish of people course, just yeah. are so patient with you. But unfortunately, the one warning here, they'll think that you're Cervantes, won't they? And they'll just suddenly come back at you, and say, then they, you can't understand them. But I would recommend. This is a bit of a problem with that. Yeah. That's the only problem is that if you, if you learn fixed phrases and are not are working on your listening as well, when they answer you, you've got no idea what they're uh, saying. Absolutely. But I think a balance between the two is absolutely great. Yeah. Have, you absolutely have some tools in your pocket. Have some phrases that you some great questions. I, I believe that questions are the answer yeah. to your Spanish. Yeah. The better you question, the more the person's going to speak and you, the more you're going to learn. Yeah, again, we, we, I'm going to go back at this after. I'm a, I'm a really, really big believer. You must have human interaction. And I'll come back to that in, an, in, another, in another, uh -huh. another answer. Okay, so number seven, don't try and be perfect. I've written here, even God makes mistakes. Am I right, Gordon? Uh, absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> and just, every day, every I'll day. I'll tell you a quick English story about why you shouldn't worry about mistakes and what's important. Um, we had some friends from Lancashire. He was, the guy was a, in his 80s and he was quite old, English people, obviously. And I said mm -hmm. to him, where did you go at the weekend? And he said, uh, we got us to the coast and we got us sandwiches. Now, <laughs> it's like this, and I think the equivalent way Spanish people speak, no one really speaks like an MP or the Queen. We just speak... Yeah. And we make mistakes all the time. And I've known a lot of English people learning Spanish. And they get so upset about making mistakes. And especially in past tenses and things like that. And, in, and instead of a star, it's say, they don't, no one really cares. I mean, if you're taking exams or you want to work in Spain in an office, you need to... But if you're there on holiday or it's a hobby, 
just chill just relax yeah. and just speak the best you can and be patient and they'll love you for it so my that's that's uh, number seven now num number eight is pronunciation and i think this is quite an easy thing to put right and i've another example of it um I, I, you've got videos on this, Gordon. Pronunciation isn't mm -hmm. that hard if you work at it. And I think, I don't know if you agree, I reckon 10 hours hard work and you'll have it. There's only certain rules. You know, a lot of it's similar yeah, yeah. to English. Uh -huh. Where the push is, mm -hmm. you know, you don't say Amarillo as in the song, it's Amarillo. Those rules that aren't that complicated. What yeah. One day I was with a Spanish woman and I'd written some Spanish phrases down and I asked her to translate them into English and mm -hmm. uh, so one of them had the word quick in it which I pronounced as rapido no idea what uh -huh. I'm talking about uh -huh. how, how, uh, and then after about 10 seconds oh you mean rapido so the push is in the wrong place things that might yeah. seem unimportant to you and the other one which is even more interesting I read her out a sentence which I'm going to read with an English accent and it's English mm -hmm. so uh, the, the, the sentence was Juan ha comprado un coche nuevo No idea what I was talking about She said uh -huh. Juan, do you mean one? No, Juan She said, do you mean one? No, I don't understand Then she said, oh, you mean Juan Juan, it's not Juan doesn't exist I don't know if you agree with me But most English people I know uh, Who are learning Spanish Would probably just say Juan and they've no idea what we're talking right. about. It's kind of just, you need to always be aware of the importance of pronunciation. It's not that hard to do. So, all right, learn grammar, learn vocabulary, but we'll also learn the quite straightforward rules about pronunciation. Do you, do you agree with that, Gordon? Sure. Is that right? Sure. I've come across some great Spanish speakers who, who have done no work on the pronunciation at all. And so they can they can talk but it's very difficult to understand when you, what you're calling the push mm. is what spanish people call el golpe de voz which is where the emphasis goes on the word and if you put it in the wrong place people cannot understand you yeah. they just can't understand no, you because it's, it's 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 foreign to them yeah. it's not it's not their language yeah, yeah. so it's very i mean and you know for example in uh, spanish speakers when they say one they will say one yeah yeah one Okay, so absolutely, they're going to be off on another on another I mean, tangent when you. I, I had one one word taught to me. I just remembered this, and uh, and it, I quite like unusual words. I, I I like making people laugh. You know, I'm quite a bubbly person, mm -hmm. and I love the Spanish sense of humour. Mm -hmm. And so, so so I asked the Spanish person, "What's the word for a miserable person?" And uh, and she asked me what the the only thing, English word I could say was grouch. And she taught me uh -huh. that the word is, and I'm going to pronounce it correctly, I believe, cascarabias. Cascarabias. Uh -huh. Now, I, when uh -huh. they taught me and they wrote it down, I used this for ages and no one knew what I was talking about. The reason is, I was saying cascarabias. What the hell are yeah. you talking about? Yeah. As soon as, and then they said, oh, cascarabias. Is that right, Gordon? Have I got that correct? Cascarabias. When, cascarabias, when you say it wrong, yeah. The, the push is so important, much more important uh, well, than in English. I'll give you I an example say. of that. Uh, uh, somebody went into the famous restaurant in Madrid, the oldest restaurant, and he ordered he ordered albondigas. He said, uh, quiero albondigas. Nobody knew what the hell he was talking about. <laughs> and then finally they, they said, no, albondigas. Ah, exactly. It's only, it's only one movement of the emphasis, but it... People don't understand, so it is very important. Yeah. You're right. Okay. Right. So I'll. I'll uh, so number nine. You can study grammar. You can study books. You can listen to things. You must meet people, and then it's possible to do it now from anywhere in the world. I, I would recommend a website called Hello Talk. It's free. You put your details okay. in, and with you be, with all, also being English, there'll be ten times more Spanish speak, speaking people who want to talk to you. I met a friend called Anna online, a lovely lady in Oviedo, and we're best friends. I've been to her house three times through Hello Talk. So kind of on this Hello one, I, I, uh, my wife had a friend been learning Spanish for a year with some app that she swore by. She did it for an hour a day. I'm not sure what it was. I'm, I'm sorry, useless. I went to a house because she wanted to practice Spanish with me been learning Spanish for one year on Duolingo or whatever that it was called. I don't know which one it was. Mm -hmm. 
couldn't speak a word of Spanish. She she could tell me how verbs worked, could exp- yeah. tell me what had, yeah. and you must practice putting all these things together. You never ever improve if you just sit in your house studying at grammar. Knowledge is not the same thing. So pl- you must sure. meet people, and that's possible. That's quite easy to do in the modern world, I think. Uh, right, yeah. my final thing, Gordon, is the most important thing. If you were going to say to me, what's the one thing you wish you could do if you go back in time? It's this. Listening and speaking are, are all completely unrelated things. And I say mm-hmm. it's like this. If, if, you were, if, if you think, is there a lot of similarity between a guitar and a piano? Of course they are. They're both instruments. They both play music. If you studied playing a piano for a year eight hours a day and then you someone said well can you go and play the guitar you won't be able to play a note of it and i think that's sure. what understanding is because i can speak reasonably well i very i really struggle to understand what people say and so you must improve your listening skills and my, my son lives in madrid he, he works in madrid he's fluent in spanish and he gave me this great tip he said mm-hmm. number one don't give up and he means by that when someone's talking to you this is what they're saying Blah, 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 and then you switch off and then you never catch anything mm-hmm. up and if someone says to you blah 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 coffee con leche blah 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 a la says blah 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 a la restaurante en la esquina you've got it haven't you so, so he even though he's fluent and he works in Spanish and he only speaks in Spanish at work he says dad 10-20% of the time I don't know what they're saying but the yeah. skill is I don't know if you agree is don't give up if you pick, you only need to get 10-15% of the words and then the, the other advice I give is from the day you start practice listening you guys have this great thing on your on your uh, um, members thing where you've got transcri- hundreds of transcriptions and that's the other thing sure. where you have to learn in my opinion not just listening you have to have a con- transcription and most uh, polyglots say this the key is have a transcription yeah. A transcription, listen to them first without it, listen to it while reading the transcription, but don't ignore it. And that you can be, yeah. you can speak Spanish almost perfectly. If you don't learn to practice listening, you'll never ever be able to get through. That's kind of, that, yeah. that's it, Gordon. I don't know if they make any sense to you. They really do, yeah. I'd like to add something to your last point. What I've found is that you get two groups of people. I mean, let's, let's be honest, speaking and listening is the the fundamentals of, of, of course, Spanish. Of course. Writing and reading is secondary. Yeah. We don't do that in our... I mean, this interaction here is all speaking and listening. Yeah. Yeah. It's speaking and listening. This is how we, we, we proceed. So what happens is you get some people who are terrified of listening, mm. Mm. Who, got, who can't listen very well, who struggle to listen. Mm. And so what they tend to do over time is they start to talk too much and they yeah. dominate the conversation yeah. because they're terrified yeah. that if they leave a gap, somebody's yeah. going to fill it and yeah. they're not going to understand. Mm. Yeah. Mm. So you get that one side and then you get the other people who are terrified of speaking mm. and who just listen, but mm. have got to really, they can understand mm. everything, mm. but they're, they're frightened to speak. Whatever camp that you find yourself in, if you are in these two camps, mm. you must then spend more time in the other camp, even of though course. you're very uncomfortable. Of you course. must... Work work more on your weak points than on your strong points. If you work on your strong points, you, they're just going to get stronger. But the weaker point is not. So always spend more time. If you're not a good listener, listen three times more than you speak. Absolutely. And it, and if you're not a good speaker, mm. speak three times more mm. than you listen. Mm. That's just the way it's got to be. Yeah. Mm. That's yeah. exactly right. Hmm. Okay. So what? What we, Mike, Mike made reference to some um, sentences that he has uh, created. But what, what I'd like to do, because I want to keep this video fairly short, Mike, otherwise no it's going to end up too long. No. But what I'd like to do is this. In the, I'm going to leave a download for you mm-hmm. in the comments of the video. Yeah. Uh, I'll leave you the link for the, the site that Mike has mentioned so that you can have a look at that, because I think that's vitally important to, to make friends and start speaking. And then what I'll do is I'll leave you a link for a download of the list of handy phrases that that Mike has built up over his time for all the situations that you might imagine, which is extremely valuable. But I think that'll be handy for you to download and then you can learn them in your own time. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, Mike, just a a couple of questions before we finish. What um, how long have you been living in Spain? Uh, We bought the house 13 years ago. 
at 5 to 12 right. when the prices were just about to drop. Uh, but right. we've lived here for about three years, around about three years. We're in Murcia, okay. in South East. In Murcia, yeah. Mm. Very beautiful. All right, so where, where the accent is very thick, yeah? <sighs> yeah, they say Cerrado, don't they? Cerrado. Cerrado. They say, Cerrado. They don't they also, say Cerrado, they say Cerrado. And then, uh-huh. Yeah, exactly. And then they say, instead of Casita, they say Casica. In the supermarket, they say Necesitas yeah. una bolsica. It's not in my bolsica. dictionary. Bolsica yeah. is not in my dictionary. Yeah, they do a lot of the eco eco. They do. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Mao yeah. Meno. Mao Meno. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, so, I mean, I went, I remember going to Murcia a long time ago when, when I just come back from Mexico and I, and I could understand the Mexicans. I didn't understand the word. Oh, I, was so, I was so disappointed. I was so, I was thinking, what have I learned? What have I been learning for two years? But then you get used to it. Just one, just um, very quick one, Gordon. Uh-huh. Um, Go on then. It was a, there was a television program on last week for national television in Spain and they were in an interview in a farmer in Murcia and it had subtitles on it for Spanish people who couldn't understand him. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. That's how hard it is. It, absolutely. I mean, if you get somebody from the north of Scotland mm. and people are watching in the or south, south of England, Shields. often, or, or, south, or South Shields, <laughs> or Cumbria. you have to have, yeah, you have to have mm. uh, subtitles, yeah. Well, listen, Mike, this has been fantastic. Thank you very, very much welcome. for sharing your knowledge El and mio. sharing your advice. I'm sure that lots and lots of people will take take value from what you said. And look down in the comments for the download for, for Mike's handy sentences, okay? Uh, and that's it. So, uh, muchas gracias, Mike. Nos vemos en, en el siguiente video, en sí. el futuro. Por supuesto. Vale. Cuídate. Hasta luego. Adiós.